What is up, Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, and today I'm going to be doing an overview of the Eerie Archives Volume 27. The final volume is here, so we're going to take a look at it, so please stay tuned. Okay, now before I get started, I wanted to say a quick thank you to Dark Horse for sending me a copy of this. Uh, this is the final volume. Over there is Volume 1 of the series when it started. And that was 10 years ago, so a decade these books have been coming out in this format, in this archive format. I've done an overview of the Creepy Magazine's uh, archives, and of the final one. Maybe when this is all together I can get a bunch of them and do like a big, uh, complete overview of the whole shebang. Well, that's going to be a lot though. The books do retail for $49.99. Uh, this particular volume collects issues 132 to 139 of the magazine. Uh, let's look at it without the dust jacket. There is Cousin Eerie right there, who is the narrator of the story and introduces us to all the stories within the pages here. So let's take a look at this. Now the book is due out on August 21st. So depending on where you get your book, sometimes places like Amazon will have them a few weeks later. So here is the contents. And all right, let's dive in here. So each one of the covers is colored. There's Cousin Eerie. Like I said, he kind of is like the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. And then within the issues themselves, there's a table of contents for the actual comics inside. Each of the stories are separated here. Let's just showcase some of the artwork. This series started back in 1966. Uh, so a lot of the time these were overlooked because of, of course, the colored versions that were Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, and Haunt of Fear. But there are some terrific stories in here and told by some amazing storytellers. Uh, you have people like Neil Adams, Al Williamson, Steve Ditko, Gene Colan, Johnny Craig. Oh my gosh, Alex Toth. Uh, I'm, I'm forgetting so many names, I'm sure. Frank Frazetta doing a lot of the covers. Uh, Louise Simonson got her first editorial job doing this uh, when she was known as Louise Jones. Look at this gorgeous artwork. And yes, it's in black and white, but it's so beautiful to look at. And a lot of European creators were first introduced to the American audience from these pages here, like uh, the Spanish studio of Barcelona. That's the first time a lot of uh, Americans here had ever seen their work. Uh, so you have the work of like Jose Bea, Isidro Mones, and Jose Gonzalez, to name a few. Now, this is a pretty cool rarity here. You have a page in color. Now, there's a reason for that, because it adds to the story. Now, each one is of these stories within these pages is a standalone story. Yeah, you don't need to read anything before these stories to be introduced to these characters, because these are kind of like I said, like Tales from the Crypt, an anthology of like horror and sci-fi stories told through the eyes of these creators. However, I will say that there are some ongoing stories, not in every one of them, uh, like Dax the Warrior, who was kind of like a Conan character. Uh, Vampirella does make an appearance here, by the way, in the early pages of Eerie and Creepy, and then she went on and got her own magazine. However, those archives are owned by Dynamite, not Dark Horse, so they are published by a different company. And I don't know exactly how they're collecting those, because I don't collect those. I probably need to start. Um, so let's see. But yes, there are other characters, or I'm sorry, there are continuing stories this is like an Aliens rip-off story. Um, like Dax the Warrior. What was the other guy's name? Prince Targo. That was it. Prince Targo of Manai, I think. Uh, Curse of the Werewolf, which is by Al Milgram. I remember that one. And then uh, there's stuff like Dracula and the Mummy. Um, and man, there's a lot of color pages in this one. So for the most part, though, they are in black and white. Horror, sci-fi, and fantasy some of the best stories that are underrated and overlooked because of, like I said, things like Tales from the Crypt and uh, all the e um, EC books. Now, the original series ran from 1966 all the way to 1983. And some of these stories have been reprinted before 
by other publishers. But this is the first time that we've had the complete collection. This is really cool. Sorry. The complete series all under 27 volumes. And I know that's a lot because there's 29 of Creepy and there's 27 of Eerie. But man, that's some of the best comics written and drawn ever. Here's This is what I was looking at. It's the awards for excellent writing, artist. It's pretty cool. 1981 awards. Yeah, because like I said, this series ended in 1983. These all have sewn binding, and they all have, like I said, this beautiful leather-bound cover with the little stamp, like the Creepy magazine, or the books have Uncle Creepy, and this has Cousin Eerie on it. In the back here, there's... Oh, damn it! See, I even forgot about Bernie Wrightson and Richard Corbin. I did mention Steve Ditko and Alex Roth, though. Oh, El Cid, right. And here I am talking to myself. So, over here, you have all the volumes that are available. I want to say they're still in print. I Don't quote me on that, though, because there are some that I'm still missing, too. And then, for the last time, closing in on the book. And that was the contents of the book. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking this and Creepy up, or if you've missed any of them and want to go back and check them out. I think, for the most part, most are still in print, if I'm not mistaken. I, for one, am going to miss this series. I can't believe it's been a long time coming. I want to say it's almost been a decade since I started buying these. But this is the final volume. All 139 issues collected now in these archives. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to check out our other videos we have on the channel. You can find us on Redbubble. You can buy our logo there on t-shirts and stickers. And you can also find us on Patreon. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.